Hello everyone, welcome to another video of Cloud Insights. In this video, I'm going to show you how to host a domain controller in cloud. In the previous video, I have shown you how to create site-to-site -site VPN between multi-cloud from Azure to AWS using Transit Gateway uh, as a router and using OpenSwan as a VPN appliance. Okay, I'm going to use the same setup to demonstrate this video. Okay, before destroying it, uh, I've, I wanted to have another video. I thought it, it's really better. It, it'll be very um, interesting to try and host a domain controller in AWS and uh, add a client from a Azure site. Okay, uh, it's not like an on-premises because uh, in cloud, uh, adding a client in an existing domain in on-premises is very straightforward and in easiest all you need is a administrative account but here uh, there are a few more things uh, we need to consider because it's cloud okay let's see what it is i'm going to switch it to the console in the existing setup what i have done is that i have installed a domain controller uh, call it as uh, vnc dot local first of all to install domain controller what you need you first the very primary thing is that you need to have a static IP in cloud how do you set up a static IP it's simple by default uh, it comes with DHCP enabled in your Ethernet adapter right in your network adapter so you just go to the network adapter right click status go to details and uh, I have actually changed it when when the machine loads up for the very first time uh, unless you change it to static, you know, it will be DHCP enabled and you would see a lot more details and take a screenshot of it and then go back to IPv4 properties and change it to static and put the same entries here. And you can change the last uh, number. Basically, uh, it doesn't make any uh, different, but um, it would be better if you can stick to the same and uh, uh, subnet mask you make it and, and the sub the default giveaway with whatever that uh, shown in the screenshot uh, put that and uh, since it's uh, it is going to be the domain controller and also I'm going to uh, install I mean I have installed the DNS server in the same machine so I have pointed out the primary DNS server to itself the local IP address okay so after changing the IP to static and uh, I haven't changed the name because uh, it doesn't make it just a demonstration I'll be destroying it later so I didn't change the host name but if you are going to do you change it appropriately like uh, BNC DC01 something whichever uh, you see fit you do it and then go to uh, manage add role and uh, Click next, role-based installation, select the server, and then select ADDS, um, Active Directory Domain Services, and proceed with installation. Also, while um, selecting it, choose ensure that you are selecting DNS as well, and proceed next and uh, complete the, promote the server to domain controller and complete the wizard. You will get the Active Directory installed. Now next. Where is our clients are? Our clients are in Azure. Now we are in AWS. In the previous video, I've used, uh, used AWS and Azure. I mean, I used a site-to-site -site VPN to uh, connect uh, these two environments, right? So I'm using the same setup. And I do have some clients running uh, in the Azure, Azure network and um, let me see if I'm able to RDP to it. Now, from the domain controller, I'm able to take the RDP of uh, a client that is running in the uh, Azure network, okay? And will I be able to change the domain to this one? Let's see, bnc.local, click OK. And what do you see? An Active Directory domain controller for the domain VNC local could not be contacted. Ensure that the domain name is typed correctly 
and the details are nothing bunch of uh, error codes for are the same we are able to rdp to it but why we are unable to connect to the active directory services from from this machine because uh, to be able to connect to the domain the client machine it should be able to reach the dns server first to the naming resolution right in order to do that it should have access to the dns server and why it is not working because the network security group okay in the network security group of this client it is only allowed for rdp port okay uh, rest of the domain related ports are not allowed i will show you a list of active directory related ports that needs to be enabled at both the side uh, security group of the aws of uh, of this instance where uh, the domain controller is installed this one okay and the network security group of uh, azure site okay it, it is a bit of a time taking process where uh, since you are doing it from the portal you need to manually enter the port numbers and uh, the address the source and destination and everything uh, it it will take a bit of a time so what i will do i will just do a fast forward you you can just uh, watch it and learn it but uh, after finishing it i'll show you the end result okay first i'm going to add the domain related uh, ports from azure site so this says the network security group that says rdp from aws site just named it uh, it could be anything you know you, you you can have a generic network uh, security group name and then add rules into it okay and one more thing since you you are going to allow the active directory related ports from both the end uh, i would strongly recommend you to use a particular ip rather than uh, specifying the whole whole network using the domain controller's private ip to create the rules okay All right. Now we have finished updating the security group. Uh, you know the whole bunch of ports belongs to Active Directory. Now let's go back to the client and uh, try to add to the domain again. Okay. This is the RDP to I have already taken to the to the client. Let's see. Again, this is uh, saying it is not reaching to DNS. Why is that? It is because we are not able to reach from the AWS side. Let's update the in the AWS as well and see whether we are able to connect. There is a catch in it. I'm going to the security group of the domain controller 
and I'm going to the similarly I'm going to add the same rules in here as well I have updated all the required ports uh, as the income inbound rules in the security group of uh, domain controller server as well and see whether we are able to connect to the connect the client machine to the domain again it is not happening why there is something about the uh, networking in the azure side let let's go and check that if you look at the dns server's entry it's pointed to inherit the dns settings from the virtual network itself right now we need to change it to custom to point the domain control server as a dns server right only then we will be able to do it but uh, the setting that i'm looking at here is uh, belongs to a network adapter uh, of the client machine if you want to make this change to the larger network it it has to be done at the vnet level let's do that virtual network and this is our vnet and go to dns service and click on custom which machines within this virtual network must be restarted to utilize the updated dns server setting yes definitely and what is the ip of the dns server let's go to the instance and uh, this is the instance of we are using it as a domain controller and use the private ip public ip is is out of question okay so click on save right now what is next we need to restart the virtual machines to get the changes uh, come effect so this is the machine that we are uh, using for the demo let's do the restart from here because we have a rdp so we'll, let's initiate the restart from here both the same either you stop and start or re click restart from the portal or uh, restart within the operating system both works all right i'm connecting to the client machine now it's restarted so the virtual machines in cloud by default gets its ip settings uh, over DC, DHCP, right? Now let's check whether uh, the changes that we have done in the at the VNet level made some effect. So I'm going to check the status of this uh, IP IP settings and yes, you see the DNS server it's uh, pointed to our domain controller which is in AWS cloud. All right. Now I'm going to add a DNS entry as well go to change and here go to more and add add your domain name here i mean uh, the primary dns suffix to this uh, computer if you are able to make this change type your domain here um what it is vnc dot local the domain name uh, the host name what we have already it will be appended as a suffix and yes if we are able to attach it here i mean if the changes here that means uh, the machine is able to reach the dns server so i'm going to changing to domain vnc dot local click ok yes <laughs> we are able to reach the vnc local domain controller which is located in aws all right now i'm going to use the um, sorry it's not the local credential that i should be using i should be using the domain controllers uh, password vnc slash administrator and uh, the password that i have created while creating the ad should be okay let's see 
it is not thrown an error of password so that means it is uh, going on in the background let's wait for some time i'll just fast forward this one all right uh, so we have successfully added a client into a domain controller which is in a completely a, in a different cloud I'm restarting the client uh, after adding it. In the meantime, in the AD, I'm going to create a new user and using which I'm going to connect to the domain, sorry, to the client. So after the restart, uh, we're able to reach the machine, but I'm going to use a different account. I'm going to use the newly created account to see if I'm able to log in. It's just the latency which is uh, causing this. You know, if it is a local network, it, it would be an instant one. So currently the authentication is happening. The RDP session is establishing between completely two different providers network in two different data centers. Yeah, here is the one more thing. Since it's a, it's a cloud that we are using, the data centers could be across the geographical locations and latency is really expected behavior for workload in cloud. You always enable network accelerator option uh, to ensure uh, the network speed is uh, matching. Uh, else you would see such latency and maybe I'll make another video what is network accelerator and uh, how does it help our uh, workloads on cloud to communicate faster. And uh, if you are a system administrator, cloud, cloud administrator, you must notice because uh, uh, not just uh, placing a workload in cloud, uh, you should also be able to troubleshoot and resolve the performance issues that comes with, right? I'll pause the video until this comes back. All right, the client is already added. Now we are successfully able to add a, a client server into a domain controller which is hosted in a completely a different environment, different cloud. This is what we have done. We have this existing setup already. We tried to add this client to the domain controller and found uh, we are unable to do because the network connections, the required ports were enabled from both the sides. So we have uh, added security group rules, all AD related ports in the security group. And the same thing we did in the, the secure, network security group level in the Azure. And also uh, we have changed the VNet DNS setting to point the local IP of this uh, domain controller so that the clients were able to, you know, get the DNS IP directly from the VNet. And then we were uh, successfully able to add the client to the domain controller, which is in AWS. Uh, is it the recommended uh, way I don't know, I'm not sure, but if your requirement is to host a domain controller, any cloud platform, this is what you really required. You should ensure that you have uh, all necessary ports. I'll show you, um, I'll put it in the description for more understanding. I will give you some links uh, from where you can refer this to, the list of ports, and uh, ensure all of the ports are uh, enabled both the site and connect to it. That's it. All right. Thank you for watching and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Thank you.